I know you've either seen or built your own kick-ass presentation. What's your best presentation trick? Hello World, Prof Mike Green here with part two of our video series, Kick-Ass Presentations. And today I've got 10 keys to kick-ass. Number one is pretty simple, but very important. One idea per slide, okay? Now that might mean you have a couple of bullets on one slide. As you can see, that's not the way I like to build my slides. I like to uh, reduce as much content, especially text, as, as possible. But as long as you stay true to one idea per slide, that's it. If you've got two ideas, you use at least two slides. Now, I know sometimes your professors will tell you, I want a PowerPoint with 10 slides. But when you're building a real presentation, nobody cares how many slides you have. All that matters is, is each slide an effective visual aid. You'll notice I haven't put any caps on your assignments for how many slides I want. And all, students always ask me, how many slides do you want? I mean, I can give you a minimum or an idea, that's fine. But what matters is, have you created a presentation that's an effective visual aid for whatever it is you're going to talk about? And the best way to do that, one idea per slide. Key two is learn from the masters. Steve Jobs was a genius of product uh, demos and product announcements. Check out his video of uh, the original iPhone announcement. It is truly amazing to watch. We've also got Nancy Duarte from Duarte Design and Gar Reynolds from Presentation Zen, two great websites that uh, will teach you, uh, you know, techniques and um, just give you some design inspiration on building awesome uh, presentations. Key number three is it's story time. If possible, pull in a personal story. If not, make one up. Your audience doesn't know as long as you're a good storyteller. So you need to practice your stories. And this, you know, for me personally, this is something that I struggle with. I'm young, I don't always have life experience to bring in a personal story for everything I want to talk about. But you can either find stories of other people, chat with your colleagues, or just plain old make something up. But a good story will almost always make your presentation better. Key number four, put in the prep time. You might think your prep time should look like this. If you think about the ante of the presentation, how important is this to you? Well, the more important it is, the more prep time I should put in. In reality, it's much more like this. If you've got, you know, the presentation that's going to give you the next level in your career, you're giving a presentation to your board of directors at a huge conference that's going to make your name, you're going to want to spend uh, a multitude more time on that presentation than you would for your 100 level college class. Key number five, think like a designer. This doesn't mean you have to go get a, a MFA degree or take a ton of art classes, but do some basic research on good design techniques. A great one is Crap by Robin Williams, not the comedian, but the author. author. Go uh, research that. Um, you know, Make use of some good typography, some good color schemes, and those will go a long way to making your presentations uh, look better than the rest. Key number, key number six is, is interesting. Think of your slides like a billboard. If you're going down the highway at 80 miles an hour, how long do you have to register the content of that billboard before it's passed? A second, two seconds max? Can your slides be processed in two seconds? If not, maybe they're too complex. Here we've got a billboard that I am not going to be able to process in two seconds going down the highway. Now this was for a, a, a worth 1000 Photoshop contest, so I don't think it's a real billboard, thankfully. But one thing to keep in mind is that text is your enemy, but type, typography, is your friend. Okay. Uh, you want to use text sparingly. You especially want to use uh, bold, italic, uh, all caps. Uh, you really don't want to underline things unless it's a hyperlink. Our minds have just, as a society, become to understand underlined text as hyperlinks. So 
use those things sparingly. But also, another way to think about this is, are your slides retweetable? Okay, 140 characters. That's all we can use to say something about your slide. Can I grasp the concept of, of your slide as an audience member? Tweet that out to my followers. That's a great way to think about, A, you know, if you're giving your presentation, getting your name out there, expanding the reach of your presentation, but also it's a great way to think about how to make that slide effective as a visual aid. Key number seven is when it comes to photos, go big or go home. Don't use small resolution photos uh, that when you blow them up full screen are become pixelated. It just looks amateurish. Now, if you can't get a high resolution photo and that particular photo is the absolute best to help convey whatever concept it is you're speaking about, okay, uh, don't make it full screen. Make it as large as you can as it looks good. Try to uh, you know align it on the slide. Maybe use some rule of thirds or something like that. Again, another designer technique. But always do your best to find full frame photos that make the maximum impact for your presentation. Key eight, when it comes to presentation mountain, you can go deep or wide, but not both. The content that you want to cover, you can you can talk about one thing and go really deep into that specific area of content. Or you could spread it out and talk about a wide array of different topic areas, but you can't do both. A, you'll almost always run out of time unless maybe you're giving a three hour lecture at a university somewhere. And B, the human attention span just can't handle it. So pick one and not both. Key number nine, very simple. Do not animate things without purpose. Okay, without purpose, things don't animate. And key 10, always remember, your presentation is the icing, but people came to see you. You are the cake. You're the meat of why they are there. Well, maybe you like a meat pie, but not really a meat cake. So. You are the cake and your presentation is the icing. It's meant to be a visual aid that assists you in your presentation. If you make a great presentation, but are a poor public speaker, that's still not the overall end goal. So if you know that you need some, uh, some help improving your public speaking skills, uh, take, a, take a class, uh, work on it, get more practice, but always remember that people came to see you. And guess what? Key number 11. Thank you so much for watching this. Thank you for uh, paying attention to this video, for being my audience. Always thank your audience at the end of your presentation. And if you can, always over deliver on what you promise. I promised you 10 keys to kick ass presentations. I gave you 11. Back to my original question. What's your best presentation trick? Comment on the video below and thanks for watching.